Hi, I'm Leah. Um, I'm at the beginning of a really big project for um, a lovely, lovely story my friend wrote. And she's written a couple. And so I'm making some... Wow, I sound really depressed. <laughs> I just had an argument with someone in my family. But, um... So, I'm about to add to... First of all, I made Ophelteen rabbits for the characters in the story. And I started with a tutorial on Serafina Fiber's art. Um, fiber Arts. Serafina's Fiber Arts. And um, I have a tutorial about bunny rabbits. So that's where I started. I ordered the kit. I also ordered a bunch of pretty pretty wool, which is, that bag is full, like so full, of all different kinds of wools that I ordered. Um, anyway, so her armature is like this. She has you make it from um, some white corded wire, which I ended up using. Um, anyhow, I made this one and saved it. This is the armature that she suggests. I'm sure she uses a much, um, this is like a simple one, you know, for when you're first learning. It works. It made, it made nice rabbits. Um, I made it a lot smaller than um, I did. At first I made one full size, and then um, I made a few much smaller. This one, I was able to be pretty happy with the face, but the body was rather um, human-like. So... I came up with my own armature. I found a rabbit skeleton picture in a book that I'm reading about rabbits and kind of just bent the armature along the lines of that skeleton and then I scaled it down to make them the size that I want to make them. So my skeleton right now looks like this. Um, it's kind of evolved into having a collarbone and a rib cage but really sharp angles so I know where the hands and the wrists are. There's a pelvis and I added a tail because funny thing you'll notice that the tail on that rabbit is rather sad. Um, really just there's like nowhere to naturally attach a tail and um, you know, the question of where is the bottom, where is the bum hole of this animal <laughs> was a big one for me, um, trying to make it look realistic. So, um, anyway, now it's evolved into this, and I actually made a skeleton with, um, a skull and some ears attached. And this rabbit, um, I attached the ears later. Uh, which means I don't have much control over over how they bend and they aren't as expressive as the other armature. So this is the first one that I made with my own armature. See how the tail rather normal. Um, anyhow, and I made this one with a number of different fibers. It has quite a bit of Angora in it, but... Sorry, I got fiber in my mouth. Um, quite a bit of Angora, maybe like 30%, and Merino, and something else in gray, because I didn't have any gray Merino. Um, but I ended up upping the content, the fiber content, to 50% Angora and all merino. So this is kind of the first rabbit that has the general, you know, everything's kind of in its right place. I also added a, see if I can do that, open her mouth. I have added a mouth that can be opened and closed and the jaw can be pushed to one side and um, the 
ears are very, very, very mobile, very expressive. I can put them behind her head, to the side of her head. I can make them push up a bit. And um, yeah, so this is her. The main character in the story's name is Violet. At this point, her name is Violet. And she is a rather white rabbit with gray, possibly brown markings. So anyway, this rabbit has all the shapes pretty much the way I want them, all the skeleton, pretty much the way I want them. So, this is the point I'm at right now of getting ready to put flesh on all of these, can you see them? All of these little bunny armatures. So I made seven, there are nine characters in the story, but I made seven and then I measured them, you know, because they all come out quite a bit different and numbered them and figured out which ones to be which characters. I wonder if I should turn this light off. Yeah, that's probably better. So, there we have it. I'm about to add muscle, which I printed off a number of pictures to help me on the internet anatomy of rabbit sort of things. This one down on the bottom here, um, it's the one that I find most inspiring for muscle musculature. This one obviously is much more realistic also. The lop-eared rabbits are quite different in their build than the, um, the stiff-eared rabbits. And this obviously is like some kind of a jackrabbit or a hare, but the shapes I find um, very pleasant and very inspiring. And it's made out of like a, a wood wooden fiber. So um, anyway, it's perfect for letting me view what might be under a rabbit. So my friend, well, let's see. So I have these seven armatures that I wanted to show you before I cover them with their muscle. I've ordered a drum carter because I've been working with these dog brushes. These are really cute and simple, well made, but easy. Uh, $6 a piece, I believe. Um, I've been building fibers like that and I would like to blend more kinds of fibers, I guess. Mostly it's, they're going to be made of the 50% Angora and the 50% Merino. But um, my friend is dying. My friend that wrote the story. Her name is Olivia. And she is dying fabric for the rabbit's clothes and curtains and other houseware soft kind of stuff. And she will also be dyeing fiber. So I'll be blending merino that she has dyed with plant fibers. Um, she's in Washington State, so there's lots and lots and lots of things there. And then I'm over here in Hawaii. Um, most of the time I work on my lanai, which is kind of got a garden going and a pottery kiln and pottery wheel down there. And more pottery junk. My bedroom. And then we are back around to the garden. So hopefully you're not so dizzy. But, um, yeah, so I think it's going to be really interesting figuring out um, how to blend. I've ordered a drum carter, which is a big deal because it's about three hundred dollars or more, and um, yeah, because these these things um, aren't quite doing it, and I need the fibers blended really well because there might be quite a color difference in the things that I'm adding. Like so far, I've just done white and gray and gray and white and white on white, so it's been pretty easy to get the color even. Although on this gray one, um, 
It wasn't even quite enough to satisfy me, but, uh, yes, yeah, so my John Carter should be coming in, maybe by the end of the week. I ordered a brother something. Drum Carter, they have their own website and a Etsy store, which is where I found them. Because I sell my pottery on Etsy as well. So, yeah, um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. But, yeah, I'm a rather private person, so um, this is my first video about this book project, which is very big and very daunting and very much um, feeling like this is what I need to be doing at this time with my time and with my energy, you know, as I do other womanly things like being a wife and a mom and a chef and, I mean, a cook, <laughs> and um, gardening and beekeeping and pottery and um, keeping myself healthy, too. So, yeah. Suppose that's it. So yeah. Okay. So, again, my name is Lee Drennan. I live in Kailua, Hawaii. And yeah. Just want to share some of my journey with you. However daunting or embarrassing it could end up being. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.